Hello everyone, Pinner Productions here, and today I'm back for round 16 of the F1 2016 career mode series, and we are going to Malaysia. And first we have an R&D event, and we have one from our mechanic, as always. So this is our upgrade from last time, as I was just saying, it should be our aero, I believe it was. Yeah, upgrade, downforce, monkey seat. So we've got a new upgrade. Let's go to practice. This weekend, we're at Kuala Lumpur for the Malaysia Grand Prix. And we're starting off with today's practice session. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the action. A warm welcome once again to the man standing beside me in the commentary box for this session, Anthony Davidson. Hello, Ant. Excited to get underway? Yeah, absolutely. I always look forward to seeing the cars get out there on track. Uh, they probably won't be on the limit immediately, of course. Uh, we know that one or two of the teams are looking to do some work on new aerodynamic packages, so that always takes some time to get into. But it'll be really interesting to see later on in the session what kind of performance gains are there to be found. So, in practice, I did, as always, the uh, qualifying lap acclimatization acclimatization not qualifying at first and I did a purple I got a green score but it's a purple lap time as I'm pretty much one of the only two to go out now here I tried to do the tire wear test but it was raining so only slightly so I decided to do the qualifying lap pace then here I am trying to overtake Roman Grosjean and breaking into the corner now I've overtaken him and set up fastest purple sector there However, I was not able to be within the lap time, so I had to go around for a second lap. And here we are at the end of that second lap, about to cross the finish line and score a purple score, objective complete purple lap. So P1 in the timings, and here I am completing the tyre wear test. So I got everything completed. I, did, I decided not to go for purple on the tyre wear, and we have now 445 points in the resource and not getting anything for these uh, we have a voicemail hi it's emma your qualifying goals came up in the board meeting this morning here's what to expect so those are our qualifying goals for the race uh, for qu qualifying even let's go to qualifying sit back and put your feet up as we head into qualifying here in kuala lumpur over the next few minutes we'll find out who's got pace in the car and who hasn't Many of the drivers have commented on the challenge posed by the high-speed direction changes around this circuit, but you still need to be quick in a straight line. Is that a fair layman's appraisal? It's easy to make your car quick in a straight line, you just take all the downforce off. But when it comes to a track like this, you really need a bit more of a compromise. The main focus here is carrying speed through the fast-flowing corners, but you still don't want to be a sitting duck on the straight. I decided to do qualifying on the soft compound tyre and I decided to use increased downforce in the preset 2 because I was struggling through the final sector in the sort of twisting bit up to the back straight uh, which is sort of parallel to the main straight in a way uh, it's like they've put a mirror down the middle and this is a section that I was talking about where I was just running wide so I decided to use that increased downforce package put a bit of a sacrifice on these straights but we have enough horsepower to use our the more downforce anyway so that did help there considerably in those corners I felt at least that it did help me through there so that was a good addition to the car setup I think and here we go with DRS to cross the line and it is I don't know what t the time is I thought it would say but there we go first on the grid for the race good qualifying session I think and again, here are the resource points we earned. 522 now is our total, and here is a rivalry update. So I am still leading the rivalry against my teammate, Sebastian Fettel. They keep repeating the rivals, so I guess I'm just that good, or it's just that easy Hi, for me. I've seen the team's expectations for the race, so I thought I'd pass them on and wish you luck. Take care. Either of the two, I don't know. But those are our race goals. Let's go to the start now. Fernando Alonso sat at the front of the grid here over a decade ago now. 
The first flash of greatness in a race that also gave us the maiden win for Kimi Raikkonen. The Malaysian Grand Prix is an event for gifted racers to climb to the top and for those on the sidelines to find new talents. Five lefts and ten rights make up the 15 corners of Sepang's 3.4 mile circuit, a track where the weather always threatens to play a deciding factor. The drivers will be subjected to forces in excess of 4G and heavy braking zones in four of these corners, two of which come at the end of DRS zones into turn one and to turn 15. And alongside me today to talk you through all that is Anthony Davidson. And welcome again. It's good to be back in Kuala Lumpur, isn't it? A lovely country, Malaysia, lovely circuit, and a race that, that tends to be quite hard to predict. Yeah, it does indeed. There are a lot of high energy corners that make the rear tyres suffer around here. Coupled with the excessive heat, that makes it difficult to keep your tyres in the right operating window. And of course, in previous years, we've come here very early in the season, which shows a potential reliability variable in there as well. You've done well to put it on pole, but we've still got work to do. Trying to cover the inside line off the start. So before the off, Let's remind ourselves of yesterday's qualifying session with a look at the starting grid. It's Ferrari in pole position then, and it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Rosberg, Vettel, Daniel Ricciardo, and Verstappen. And here we are with the strategy. I decided I wanted to change the hard tyre to the medium tyre. However, the hard tyre was the mandatory tyre here. So here we go to the start of the race. Three lights, four lights, five lights, and... Away we go for the start, got bogged down a little bit there but it doesn't seem to have hindered me too much as Hamilton also gets a bad start. So we're both in the same boat here in Malaysia as we break for the first corner. Going around sliding a little bit in the braking but not too bad and I've held first position. Left handed now into turn two I would call that and now this is turn three at least that's what I would call it. Personally uh, turn one could be turn one and two, sometimes they do that but... Anyway, here we are, and I'm still ahead of the field, which is good, which means I am going to be extending my lead over Hamilton, who has now been overtaken by Nico Rosberg, as you can see there, which is a good thing to see, because that means my championship will be extended even more. However, currently Rosberg and Vettel are equal in the points, so I prefer it to be Vettel ahead and not Rosberg, or Vettel ahead of Rosberg, at least, in Hamilton there, but... Unfortunately, it's not to be at the moment. Maybe Vettel could make a move on Hamilton. I don't know. I mean, I am ahead of the two Mercedes, so it, anything is possible, really. And we're all on the soft top three, running a bit wide there. Not good to see that, but I've recovered well. And now through this section where I was saying I was struggling in practice and it doesn't seem to be going too badly. Oh, no, it did that well now. See that Vero uh, changing has helped, to be honest. I think it's the first time I've actually adjusted any aero setup at all, so yeah, that's a bit odd, really, but it works for me. So maybe I'll do that in the next uh, race. I don't know. Might be worth trying it out anyway in practice session. I'll see what the next race is. I believe it's Japan after this one. So maybe, again, the aero might help there as well through the S's. So I think I might try it there, see what it's like. But I am still in the lead. I set the fastest up, as you probably expect, keeping first place all the way round. So, yeah, looking like a good race. And here I am at the end of lap four, breaking for the final corner. And I am going into the pits on this lap. And will anybody else follow me? It doesn't look like anybody is actually following me. I'm the only person in the top four or five there. Possibly even top six. Okay, so top four or five to come in. Vettel's now set a fastest lap. He is one place ahead of me and now I'm just dropping down the field. Oh, a couple of other cars are coming into the pit so that's good to see that I am not the only one and that I won't be coming out in dead last. But it will probably still be dead last-ish if you know what I mean. Behind the field just not dead last as in there are still cars behind me. So got a break for the first corner now going a little bit wide going slowly bringing up my uh, fuel mix menu again just so I can monitor that and we are in rich mix so let's go racing and try and catch some of the cars that are ahead of us 
And now coming onto the pit straight on the next lap, lap five here, and we are going to move up positions as people are in, in the pits. And where are we coming ahead? Oh no, we're behind Hamilton! This is not good, the undercut has not worked here and Hamilton has performed an overcut on us. Also, Fettel has moved up in time to us, so we've lost time on that lap, on that out lap to their in lap and we are now behind Hamilton. This is not good, that means he effectively has the lead. Can I make a move though into this corner? Yes I can, had to cut the corner slightly there, trying to give him room, sort of get on the curb really. And here we are, back into effective P1, I believe. Gutierrez is ahead of us now. I He'll probably have to pit. I bet he's going for a long stint. As you can see, he's still on the soft, though. So, probably be a late pitter. Trying to go for a long stint. Trying to get an ultra overcut on who he is racing. So, hopefully that will work out for him. But not too well as we go wide there. And we are still ahead. It looks like Gutierrez is quite far away at the moment, though. Coming across the start finish line now, and we are overtaking some more cars, so we are coming out into P2. Who's in P Rosberg has jumped us all, he's in P1 now. So his overcut has worked out even better for him. Also, one thing I've started to notice is their skies are looking quite a bit greyer than they were earlier in the race. So is it possible that we may be having a wet race later on? I don't know. But we'll see because that will make things interesting. Can we make a move though on Rosberg? He'll have to go a little bit wide as we perform the same move that we did the previous lap on his teammates. And it has worked two laps running on the two Mercedes drivers. And we are up into P1 of the race once again. And we have grey clouds in the skies as well. So we'll have to see if we get a wet race at some point. And now onto the start of lap 9 and I have set a fastest lap once again and Vettel is in second place with Rosberg behind him so it looks like Vettel will be able to keep his points position and get ahead of Rosberg and now Hamilton has moved up so Hamilton is also behind Vettel as him being in second place so that is good for Ferrari's constructors at the moment. Hopefully this will not get interfered with with the, the rain or anything because this is really good for us. A 1-2 in Malaysia would be amazing to have at this race. Get some good constructors points ahead of Mercedes and get Vettel ahead of Nico Rosberg and get him chasing down Lewis Hamilton in the points would be a really good thing to do. And I'm starting to see a bit of rain now on that. Oh wow, safety car. Right, so I'm going to switch on to the intermediate tyres and I will box at the end of lap 10. So here we go. We're going to try and catch up to where the safety car is. Fettel is still behind us, so he is staying out. And Rosberg is staying out, but I believe Hamilton has gone into the pits. Who's that behind Rosberg? I doubt Hamilton is that far behind Rosberg. I think he was even ahead, so I believe Hamilton has also gone into the... Well, has gone into the pits. So I'm going to stay out for this lap on the wet uh, weather in lead mix and oh, we a slide there in this wet weather. I'm using the hard tyres in the start of the rain and there we go, caught up to the safety car now and we will pit at the end of this lap to go onto the intermediate tyres. And now coming round to go onto the back straight once again, the weather is looking a lot heavier than it did earlier. Also, I wonder why the safety car came out then, because we still got 22 runners in the race as well, so it's not like anybody retired and the marshals have to retrieve anybody, so have they literally just come out because it's raining? Because why would they, A, why would they do that, B, that's sort of like real life F1 where if you saw Monaco the start of that race, it started under the safety car. And the start of the Silverstone Grand Prix started under the safety car. They were both wet starts. Is the Codemasters game following on from real life F1? Who's that behind me? Rosberg's come into the pits, but my teammate stayed out. So he has effectively taken the lead now of the race. Can I keep P3 though? 
as I exit the pits now. No, it's going to be P4 behind Ricardo now. So I'm now behind Ricardo. Wow, this is interesting then. So I've lost the position. So this time the undercut has worked against the overcut. It's interesting that how the undercut works against the overcut because it was the other way around earlier. So I've had bad pit strategy twice now. <clears throat> okay, so I've got to now follow behind Ricardo under the safety car conditions. Hopefully we will get some racing later on um, and the safety car will go back in. But for now we will just have to follow behind Ricardo as we are now catching up to him. Obviously we are going a little bit faster than him, I assume, as we're catching up to him. Or maybe he's just being slowed down by the pack now. And it looks like we will probably be in the same position in a moment. And Ricardo is trying to warm his tyres as well. Keep the tyres warm, which is a good idea. I was just trying to catch up with him, to be honest. So that's why I'm also in I'm also in standard now. So I'll probably switch that back down to lean at some point. But I don't think I'm going to need it now, considering how much fuel I've got left. I've got plus 2.23 laps. So... Yeah, five laps of fuel remaining, so no need to um, put it in lean mix, just to go s slowly, really, is all that's for, for me, anyway. Not for saving fuel, we've got plenty, even after one and a bit, almost two laps of safety car conditions. And now on lap 12, the safety car will be in at the end of the lap. My teammate pits, so I'm now up into P3 behind both Ricardo and Hamilton Rosberg is behind me, so I don't know where my teammate is. He's probably got an even worse place than I have an even worse pitting. So I'm going to have... Do you think he likes the sound of his own voice sometimes? He just had everything to say there. Uh, but I'm just going to try and keep as close behind to Ricardo as I can. It looks like... Vettel got an even worse place than I did, as I was saying. So we have had a bad strategy. I'm going to have to overtake these two in the next two laps of the race, the final two laps of the race. So one car per lap, possibly, depending on how fast I can catch them and all of that kind of stuff, different factors. But here we go. Prepare to resume racing speed up into standard mix now. Breaking for the final corner. Still yellow flags. Can we get to green, green flags? Away we go in standard mix. Can we overtake Ricardo on this pit straight up into rich mix? Now we've got plenty of fuel to run rich mix for the whole of these two laps probably. But I'm just going to keep it in switching for now anyway. So rich mix breaking into the final corner or first corner. And Rosberg is right behind us. That's classic his rear left or rear right tyre with my front left wing a little bit there. A little bit of a nudge with Ricardo. Him going slowly through the corners which is odd for Red Bull with good aerodynamic capabilities but I'm ahead of Ricardo now and I'm catching okay thank you uh, I'm now catching Lewis Hamilton so here we go into the sweeping left hander that is a turn I don't know the number of and we are going into the right hander quite slowly at the moment because of the weather don't want to be going off track which I've just done a little bit there but it's not too bad because it's an easy recovery and it was just one wheel off and now getting on the curb there just trying to keep grip grip with the grass I don't know why but there you go and turning into the left hander up and we are right behind Hamilton now hopefully we can make a move through the next sector or on the pit straight at least but we won't have DRS to help us so this is going to be a proper move probably going up into rich mix at some point and we're going way too quickly through that corner so down into third gear here and round the corner onto the back straight and we are up into rich mix we're getting some spray on the camera trying to keep with Hamilton he is keeping ahead though looks like an easy job for the works Mercedes can we get him in this braking zone no we can't too far behind at the moment can we get him on this straight because we are right behind him now right on his gearbox and there is no room for slipstreaming we are almost wheel to wing with him but no he's going to keep ahead get in the slipstream move to the other side of the track and break to keep the inside line 
Halverson's going to try and keep the racing line. He goes a little bit wide as I take the racing line now. Being ahead of him and I've taken P1. He tries to go up the inside but there's not enough room there. And I'm back into the lead of the race on the final lap now. And we can go to the end here. Hamilton is still behind though. So will we have to defend from him into this corner where I overtook him and his teammate. One lap or and then the next consecutively have gone wide here. And Hamilton is not able to overtake, surprisingly. But the proximity arrows are very close, so that means he is really right on my gearbox now. Although the proximity arrows are now dropping away a bit. But as I go through that corner slowly, they come back. And he's quite far away, further away than I would have thought the proximity arrows would show distance, really. But we are still in P1. And the proximity arrows are gone now. So does that mean we are moving away? Hopefully it does. We are in standard mix at the moment. As you can see there, it isn't really needed, it's just because, again, that I'm used to changing it, so I did. Uh, and now into the right-hand corner for the final sector now. I'm going to keep it in standard for these corners, don't want to be running off. It looks like the rain has eased off though now, so that is interesting to see that we've passed through the rain. I can see a little bit of blue poking through the clouds in places. And now on to the back straight again, up into Rich Mix for the straight. DRS is now... It was already disabled. Why are you telling me this again? I don't understand the engineer sometimes. Uh, but breaking into the final corner for the final time. Looking around the inside at the spectators. There you go. You can have a look at the spectators. Back at Hamilton. And we go across the line to win the Malaysian Grand Prix. completely changed the race didn't it it's hard to say exactly what would have happened without it but there's no question that they came out of that situation in a good position and as we can see it's time for the podium and as the drivers make their way out there's a familiar red suit making its way to the top step fantastic win for Ferrari After this round of the world championship, so, here's how things look in the driver's table. So everybody behind my teammate has moved up because he finished in 12th place, so he got no points in the end, which is not good to see. Pascal Verlein finishes in 10th, so he also gets a point. And it sounds like he's also driver of the day. Mercedes move to the top of the table. And Mercedes are now ahead of us. And Manor have got points now because of Pascal Verlein being in 10th place, obviously, because my teammate had a bad pit strategy. Obviously, Verlein capitalised on that and was able to get points for Manor, so good to him. And good to see Manor scoring points this season. Later than they did in real life, because they scored points, or a point in Austria, I think, one or two points. So... Yeah, later than real life, and also because of Fettel, both... Uh, whoa, Illuminati again. And now onto our career score. There you can see we've got about six something. And this is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give a like. We are now ahead of Red Bull in the vehicle performance comparison. Renault are ahead of McLaren and Honda, which is a surprise, really. And I think next time we will go for chassis weight as an upgrade. We have got 502 or 602, it looks like there. I can't really make that out on the resolution of this display. I've got it on the Max and the software is still blurry. So that that's not really good for the preview window. But thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.